Welcome back to day three of the L890 Airy Top and Comfy Dress Sew Along. In our previous video, we printed and assembled our patterns. Today, I'll be walking you through the best practices for taking your measurements and choosing a size. From there, I'll discuss blending between sizes and lengthening and shortening your pattern to perfect your fit. With that, let's get started. First, we're going to talk about selecting your proper size. One of the most important things you can do to start any new garment off on the right foot is taking accurate measurements and properly choosing a size. If the pattern you start with is too small or too large, no matter what you do adjustment-wise, your garment fit is always going to be a bit off. The three basic measurements needed to select your size are the bust, waist, and hip. The bust measurement refers to the full bust. For this measurement, you're going to measure around the fullest part of your bust, wearing whatever type of bra or undergarment you plan on wearing under your finished garment. So bring the tape measure around. Make sure that the measuring tape is parallel to the floor and taut, but not tight. You wanna make sure you're still able to breathe. Write that measurement down. The waist measurement will be at your natural waist. On many people, this is the smallest point of your torso, but that can depend on your body shape. I'm personally a square, so there isn't an obvious waistline looking at me. If you're in the same boat, a good rule of thumb is to bend side to side. The point that you bend is your waist. So just take your measuring tape, bring it around the back, again, taut but not tight, and write down your measurement. The hip measurement will be the fullest part of your hips and butt. Typically, this is approximately seven inches below your natural waist, though it can be higher or lower. That all depends on your body. You wanna make sure you get around the full circumference no matter where it falls, so that way you don't end up with a garment that's tight in the hips. I like to stand with my feet hip width apart when taking this measurement. It's just a bit more natural of a stance. So again, bring your tape measure around and note your measurement. Once you get your measurements, it's time to select your size on the size chart which can be found on the Grainline Studio website or in the We All Sew blog post for this video. If your measurement falls between two sizes, for instance, your bust is a 35 and a half, you wanna round up and choose the next size. If you fall into different sizes for each measurement, as I do, you can either go with a straight size of the largest measurement or blend between sizes to get a better fit. There are a few things to think about in this situation. The airy top has a boxy fit, so the most important measurement is going to be your hip followed by your bust. It's a straight line down from the bust to the hip, so you wanna make sure that measurement is going to fit around here. Focus on choosing your size based on those two measurements. The comfy dress is fitted, so you wanna make sure all three measurements are correct. If you're more than a size apart in the most important measurements for each garment, you'll likely want to blend between sizes to avoid having one section of the shirt or dress tight or loose. The garment can look ill-fitting if one area doesn't fit right, but more importantly, it can be uncomfortable, and these garments are all about comfort. The measurements shown here are my personal measurements. So for the airy top, I would cut a size 10 to accommodate my hips. The bust isn't fitted, so I'm not gonna worry about blending between sizes here. And since the sides of the top are straight and my waist measurement is smaller than my hip, I don't really need to be concerned with my waist measurement. Now, it's a different story for the comfy dress. Since that is fitted, I will want to blend from an eight at the bust to a 12 at the waist, then back down to a 10 at the hip. If you're a straight size and don't need to do any pattern adjustments, you're good to cut your pattern pieces. But if you fall between sizes as I do, or just want to make an adjustment, we'll discuss that now. Making adjustments to your pattern is a great way to really customize your fit, and it does not need to be difficult or overwhelming. Since I know a lot of you are just getting into garment sewing, I want to share five tips that I have found helpful for students in regards to pattern adjustments over the 10 years I've been teaching. 
Start with a muslin. I always recommend making a muslin or test garment before making any pattern alterations. This way you aren't guessing at what you'll need to adjust, but can pinpoint exactly what is working and what might need to be done. Only make one pattern adjustment at a time. We get questions all the time that go something like this. I can't get the fit down on a pattern. I've done XYZ adjustments. Which one is causing this new problem? Unfortunately, there's no way to really isolate the issue because three adjustments were done at once. So if you're looking to do multiple pattern adjustments, start with one and only after you get the previous adjustment looking great, move on to the next. Once you get your initial adjustment looking good and you're ready to move on to the next one, if you're doing more than one, trace off a new pattern piece and make the adjustment to the new piece. That way, if it turns out you didn't need the adjustment after all, or it isn't working for some reason, you can easily step back to the previous iteration of the pattern. A general order of adjustments that I recommend is start with blending between sizes then any length adjustments, and after that, any bust adjustments you might need to do. Don't forget that you can always measure any point on your body and compare that to the pattern. Not sure if the shoulders are going to be too wide or too narrow? Measure your shoulders and then measure the pattern. In the same way that we use body measurements to draft the pattern, you can use your own measurements to check the fit before you even get started. Now, let's get into our specific pattern adjustments. The first pattern adjustment we're going to cover is blending between sizes. I'll be blending my comfy dress pattern from an eight at the bust to a 12 at the waist to a 10 down at the hip as we discussed previously. Now, one thing I like to do is take a highlighter and just highlight where I'm blending. So there's an eight, 12, and 10. So now you have more of a reference point as to where you're going to be going instead of just a bunch of random black and white lines. So now you're going to need a curved ruler. This is a very form curve. It's just a curved metal ruler that mimics the curves of the body. So take your ruler and we'll start with blending the waist to the hip. Now keep in mind you want to blend from the lower area of the waist. You don't want to blend from the waist because that's affecting the measurement there and that is the correct measurement that we want. So I'm going to start where it starts turning into the hip and it may take a few adjustments to get your ruler in place. But once it's in place, you can just trace out your new line. I'm just gonna darken that in a bit. Now for the bust to waist, I'm blending out two sizes. So it's going to be a little more difficult to blend. Take your ruler and again, adjust the curve until you find something that works and then trace that off. So now we have our new side seam. We're going to need to do this to the back as well. And then we're going to have to cut. So again, if you're worried about cutting, I just like to highlight the areas that I'm cutting. So I'm cutting an eight at the top through the armhole and then this part's easy down to the bottom with a 10. Now when you're blending between sizes not only do we have to do this to the back as I mentioned but we have an armhole and a neckline that are both finished with an added band. So since we're cutting a straight size eight at the neck and the armhole, we're going to cut a straight size eight on the neck and the armhole binding. So right now I'm just gonna highlight those two lines 
That way I don't get confused later on. Now, if you did wanna blend the airy top, you can see that the side seams are very straight. This notch is where the armhole ends and that's also just about the bust line. So say we wanted to blend from a zero to a two. You're just gonna, again, align the curve. And when you're blending with two straight things, two straight lines, you can see here, this connects at an angle. So you're gonna wanna do two movements with your ruler so you get a nice smooth line between the two. But again, since this is a very roomy top and the side seam is straight, I recommend just picking whatever size is the largest, your bust or your hip, and just cutting the whole thing that size. Now, if you wanted to lengthen or shorten your pattern, we have this line here through the center where you can easily add length or remove length. So I'll show you how we do that. All you have to do is simply cut along one of the lines. You can see there why we wanna make sure everything we cut is taped down. You're gonna take a piece of paper if you're lengthening And then using your ruler, extend the center front line up so we have a base point. Now say we wanna lengthen this an inch. All you do is take your ruler, align it with a cut edge, draw in an inch. Then we're gonna take our top piece. We're going to use the center front line that we drew along with the line marking an inch across to make sure our pattern is properly aligned. And then just tape that down. Now we need to connect here. So I'm gonna just connect an eight. And that's it. Um, you can also add length You can also add length by just adding an inch onto the bottom. So say we're lengthening the zero, you just add, align your ruler with the lower hem edge, cross, and then down. Now, if you wanna shorten, it's exactly the opposite. Instead of spreading, we're going to overlap. So to shorten an inch, align your ruler with the cut edge. Draw a line across. And then just align your pattern piece. You won't really need to blend anything because this is a straightish edge. And if you want to take it off the bottom, it's the same thing. Take your ruler, align it, and just draw across. Now, one of the benefits to lengthening and shortening in the center of the pattern is that you don't affect anything going on at the hem edge. So here we have these notches that we'll need later to hem. These are still intact when we lengthen and shorten through the waist. Now, all we have left to do is cut. So I'm just using paper scissors for this and I'm cutting along the line that I had previously highlighted. Now here I'm going off my line that I blended. And just 
just the center front left. one final step that you're going to want to do. So you can see here in the side we have a notch um, around the bust area and then another notch here at the hem. We need to snip those notches so we remember to mark them while cutting. So I'm going to use my notcher, the pattern notcher. It just makes a small notch into the pattern. Um, I have these for sale on my website if you are interested in having one or if you don't have a pattern notcher you can take your scissors and just cut out a little triangle so once you have everything cut and notched that is it for today's lesson I hope this information helps you make a more informed decision on choosing a size and making pattern adjustments next time I'll be going over cutting out the fabrics for all three garments so get your size selected make any adjustments you might need and I'll see you back here for that and as always if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you with some help thanks for joining in and I'll see you next time